Okay, thanks for the invitation. Uh, I hope you hear me well at the back. Uh, it's going to, you can relax now, there will be f much less math and much more images. Um, and the topic is, um, as Taito said, uh, says is about domain adaptation. And it's a uh, joint work with uh, Chuan Hong Vu, Himalaya Jain, Maxime Boucher, and Mathieu Ko at Valio.ai. Um, and the starting point of this work is the, um, uh, it's a very practical concern for everyone who is trying to put together uh, a data set for training uh, perception systems, as, as we try to do. And uh, <clears throat> so, so much we're happy with the progress of, uh, of machine learning and deep learning in particular. Um, one has to, to, to admit that most of the progress, or at least the, 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 the state-of-the-art performance, is achieved with full supervision. Uh, and this means that uh, putting together the training set is, uh, is a bit of a nightmare. Uh, first of all, because you do have to collect uh, a wide and clean and diverse data set, which is already a problem per se, but on top of that, you have to annotate everything. And sometimes it's not even possible. Uh, let me just take an example to give you uh, um, uh, an idea of what it means. And, and this example is the running uh, application that I have in this talk. It's a semantic segmentation of visual scenes. Uh, so, some, so many people in this room must know the problem, but just to, uh, to, to, to recap, uh, the issue is to predict, and you need that at, uh, in your annotation, to predict a semantic label for each pixel of your scene. So if you want to assemble a training, uh, a training set for full supervised learning, like this one, uh, uh, which is, uh, um, which is uh, cityscapes uh, with, in many cities in, in, in Germany, you have to ask people to paint with the labels each of these pixels. So to do that on one image, you can imagine it's pretty tough, and it can be 10, 20, uh, up to 60 semantic labels. Uh, so in this data set, they provide this uh, accuracy, this, uh, this, uh, this granularity of annotation for 5,000 images, okay? And it's already, it's already an, an, a, a feat. Um, and for, for, to analyze video, you would dream to have that for each frame in a video. So this is completely out of question for now. Uh, and effectively, what you have in this data set on a larger scale, which is 20,000 images, I believe, is this type of annotation. Just, it's called uh, coarse annotation, <laughs> just because of the, uh, the mere difficulty of the annotation. Uh, and this, this, uh, in this case, a human can do that. There are other problems like optical flow depth estimation, where uh, the, uh, at the pixel level, the, 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 uh, the, the, the information of interest is a, is, a, is a measure, and there is no way you can do that uh, manually. Uh, Okay, so um, it's pretty, pretty annoying. Um, and on top of that, even if you, if you do that on large scale for real, real world uh, problems where it's, you go in the wild and especially if it's a quick critical system, it's no matter how, how, how hard you work, it would be insufficient. You will always uh, face situations and conditions that you have never seen at training time. So this is pretty much where we are uh, in many uh, domains, including safe driving cars. Um, so in order to mitigate these problems or to, to move forward, you can call to the rescue a large number of different techniques which have been around in, in machine learning for, for a while and they are very interesting in their, in their own right. I'm not going to go through this uh, list, obviously, and you might uh, pick your favorite one. Uh, but uh, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, what is important here is that there are tools to, to, to train systems with um, um, less uh, annotation. Uh, typically, you might have some of your data which is not annotated and, and the other part which is annotated, or you might, you might have annotation for some of, the, of your classes and other classes you have only few or no uh, annotation at all. Uh, so there is a large body of literature, but today I'm going really to focus uh, on these three things, uh, um, uh, transfer learning, data, data, domain adaptation, and learning from th synthetic data, because obviously one of the very powerful uh, uh, um, uh, work around this annotation issue is to work with uh, synthetic data for which the uh, annotation is for free, uh, at least for the type of visual understanding problem that we, we have. Um, so transfer learning as, as i mean this this very uh, interesting and, and even intriguing question where you learn uh, either i mean you, you you learn on a different task or you learn on a different uh, type of d data for the same task and then there is this idea of being able to transfer this knowledge to your actual task or your actual distribution of interest so in the case where you have a single task and you train on a certain domain and then you want to to, to run on the different domain is specifically called uh, data uh, domain adaptation. 
But what is a bit funny about this idea is that it sounds like a bit like the uh, streetlight effect. I mean, where you look for your keys under the lamppost, but you lost them uh, in the dark somewhere else in the street. Uh, uh, so it, it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but the fact is, and we have plenty of evidence, in particular in deep learning, uh, that it, 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 it is useful to learn on a different task or a different domain to apply uh, to a different to another one at runtime. And of course, it's because uh, there is a lot of common structure, or hopefully there is a common structure uh, that can transfer from uh, from one uh, task to the other. Uh, so it's a very it, it is a very uh, it's a very uh, uh, powerful path, and this is the one we are going to take here uh, uh, today um, in the context, the specific context of domain adaptation. So again, domain adaptation uh, uh, is, 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 is a big subfield sub of uh, transfer learning, and it, it, it was already very active before deep learning, and it's applied to many, uh, uh, to many domains, including in computer vision and, and image understanding. So for a thorough reference, uh, I recommend this, uh, this very good uh, contributed volume, which has been uh, put together by uh, Gabriel Surka at uh, Naval Labs, uh, and, and there you can have uh, the full, uh, full uh, coverage of the topic. Um, today, I'll, um, I'll, um, I'll focus more on recent things with, uh, with in particular, adversarial training. Uh, but so, uh, just to, to, um, to set the stage, the problem is to, to, to bridge a domain gap between uh, the data you have at training time uh, and which is called the source domain and the data that you will have at, at uh, test time or run, uh, at run time, which is called the target domain. So the, the discrepancies of the domain shift can come, uh, come from many different reasons and sometimes they combine. One, for instance, is that if you do uh, urban scene analysis for self driving causes, the weather is different. Uh, the light uh, uh, illumination, the illumination is different uh, between day and night, of course, these kind of things. Uh, very important topic, you train in, 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 in Paris, you want to deploy your car or your uh, perception system in Asia, very different, everything is different starting with the cars. Um, another thing, uh, which is pro probably less uh, less um, understood is uh, uh, when you have different sensors. Either it's a completely different sensor. In this in this case, on the left you have a regular uh, narrow field uh, camera. On the right you have something which is very uh, useful for cars, which are wide angle fish eye, fish eye cameras, and obviously very different geometry. Uh, and even the, the the position on the on the setup of the sensors can be very different. Uh, sometimes it's just the resolution which is different, but uh, you, you, you can you get a feel of all the sources of, of, of variations between train and, 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 and test. And last but not least, there is this situation where you train on synth synthetic images. In this case, it's uh, from uh, a game engine, and you want to uh, then to use that in the real life. Uh, uh, so the good thing, with, uh, as I said before, with the synthetic data is that this you can get for, for free. In this case, it's not the ground truth, but what you would get if you train on this synthetic data and then you run on synthetic data, you get this, le this level of quality of semantic segmentation. And then you take this system as it, as, as it is and you put it on your, you run it on your real, uh, this is the legend, you put it on your real data and this is what you get. So just to, to, just to give you, and this is a real, real problem, I mean, just to give you a, an idea of the drop of performance that you might face when uh, training on, 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 the, on, the, on the good domain, which is fairly uh, different from uh, what you target. Okay, so the, the, there is a specific in domain adaptation. There are, uh, again, there are many variants and flavors. So today I'm interested in what is called the unsupervised domain adaptation. So the assumption is that at, uh, you have source domain data for which you have full annotation. This is what you see on the left uh, with these synthetic images and the, uh, the ground truth semantic segmentation. And at training time, you have as well, ahead of time, you do have as well um, uh, target uh, domain data, but with no annotation whatsoever. So that's the pure form of UDA, unsupervised domain adaptation. Uh, and this is the, uh, the, the setup that I, I'm going to explore, uh, to explore today. Uh, so in this example on the left, you see the, 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 the synthetic data from, is from Cynthia. We will see more uh, on this data set. And on the right, it's cityscapes. Um, of course, uh, in, 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 in practical, I, I, might, uh, I might discuss that at the very end, but in, in, in very practical situation, it seems a bit silly not to, have, to assume that you have no annotation whatsoever on the target uh, data, so you might have a bit of annotation, etc. but let's stick to this, uh, to this setup for now. 
Um, so, uh, with the, the, in, in, the, in the context of deep learning, there are, there are a number of tools that have been, in particular, recently uh, uh, promoted for to, to address this, uh, this UDA problem. And some of them just come from the uh, shallow uh, method before that. So it's, they are me a mere extension to deep learning, and some others are really specific to deep learning. Uh, and, uh, but at the end of the day, um, what the system has to do at training time, leveraging these uh, t uh, annotated uh, source domain and unannotated target domain data, is of course at the same time to, 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 to learn how to solve the task, but also to really reduce the gap between the two domains. And when we talk about that gap here, it can be the gap in terms of the really input signal, uh, so the images themselves in this case. It can be also uh, expressed in terms of the uh, deep features when you have deep learning uh, uh, architectures, uh, or it could go all the way as we will see to the actual output or near output of the network. So you, you might try to reduce this gap at different, so to speak, different depth in your, in your system. Uh, and in order to do that, there are a number of tools, so there are uh, ways uh, to penalize the discrepancy between uh, uh, statistical distributions, uh, including you can use uh, optical, uh, optimal transport to, to characterize and even reduce this gap. Uh, um, you can also use uh, what is, uh, what is uh, very powerful in, uh, in adver uh, adversarial training techniques where you have a discriminative approach where you, you have another network trying to decide whether the, basically the gap is still here or not. Uh, and you can also uh, use, uh, as, you will, as we will see, a uh, generative adversarial ne network to, um, to do some kind of style transfer where you, you, you transform your, uh, your uh, source data into uh, something which looks like uh, uh, target data. Uh, and there are other techniques, one is called self-training, where uh, we, you start by training your, your system mostly on your uh, uh, source data with full supervision, and then you start using the system to pr produce uh, um, uh, not so good but interesting result on your uh, target data, and this helps you finding uh, co some of the examples are easy enough to, to be turned into uh, uh, automatic la automatically labeled tra uh, training data for the rest of the process. Um, I'm going to show a few examples from uh, the recent literatures focusing mostly on semantic segmentation. Uh, and again, I'm not going to, to give a full coverage, and it's, uh, but I will mention essentially um, um, approaches that we compared to because they are state of the art. Uh, uh, and I will focus even, even more on uh, the, 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 the techniques which use some kind of adversarial training or, uh, uh, so somewhere in the system. Uh, and so there is this uh, interesting idea which is, which in, for instance has been promoted here in, in 15 on problems which are not for, uh, it wasn't, I think, I don't, I don't think it was for segmentation, it was more for classification. But this gives you really a, a high level idea of how to use adversarial training to do uh, a domain adaptation. So in this work, so they have this, what they call the um, um, reversal uh, gradient, but it uh, doesn't really matter. The, uh, just, just look at the picture, and I won't go through the notations. So the, the typical setup is that you have, um, you have this mainstream uh, of, of a convolutional neural network, or deep network, with the first part, which is the encoder, going from the input signal to some uh, uh, deep re representation. And then classically, you have the second part, which decodes these features into your, uh, your uh, uh, prediction for your task of interest. So in this case, it could be uh, 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 classification. So you have, if you have C class, you have uh, C scores for each of these class, OK? And the idea is to, uh, to graft another branch to your network, um, starting from the, uh, somewhere in the network from the, some of the features. And you, tr you have another network which aims is to decide whether these features, they come from the source domain or the target domain. So it's a discriminative, it's, it's, it's a classification problem, binary classification problem. Uh, um, to, uh, to decide which domain it is. And these things are uh, trained together. And the idea is really is for the main network to defeat the other one. And this is the very powerful idea around uh, uh, um, adversarial networks. <coughs> and this, is, this has indeed been used. Uh, well, I don't know why it's not working anymore. Oh, this has been used. Uh, don't tell me that it's frozen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess I need a little technical break here. No. No. Hmm? It's okay. Not quite actually, it but uh, it's not reproducible. Look at that. 
I'm going to do the horrible thing. Um, Let's see if this and this is enough. Okay, let's see. <coughs> it's embarrassing, and we I'm recorded here. Uh, okay, four point here. All right. Let's see if I'm um, more lucky now. Mm -hmm. no. So the first, um, yeah, okay, okay. Yes. All right. So the first, uh, 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 the first to, to use this uh, this uh, this idea for um, uh, for uh, seg segmentic segmentation was uh, Hoffman in sixteen. Uh, and again, I'm, for each of these methods, I'm not going to go into the full detail, but just to, trying to to convey the main idea. So what you just saw before is exactly the same here. So you have these. Uh, uh, um, uh, encoder decoder network which are uh, f which are trying to regress a class label or at least class cores at each pixel of your input scene uh, and they are the, there is in, there is so the, you have here the uh, source uh, domain data the target one which is unlabeled and for uh, so you have the classic uh, learning for the uh, source for which you have the ground truth and for the target you don't have. But now you have in between this adversarial network which aims is to decide whether the features they align or not between the two domains. Uh, there is a, in this, in this uh, work, there is an additional uh, interesting idea which is at the same time to add another uh, interesting uh, information which is uh, on the on the source domain, you can compute the statistics on the on the ground truth. You can have the sort of the proportion of the different classes, and you can enforce that on the uh, segmentation that you get for for your target domain. <coughs> so these are the two two very interesting ingredients. Another <coughs> uh, work which is uh, a mix of many different things: adversarial network, but also generative ad adversarial network, which is called Cicada. Um, uh, goes as, as, as uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, 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 to isolate what is really uh, specific here. So one aspect that you see on the left, which is very interesting, is that they, they train what is called a, a, a cyclic consistent uh, uh, generative adversarial network. Actually, there are two networks which um, are trained to translate from one uh, the visual uh, data from one domain to another. So it turns, it, it, tr it, it, this is something which has been very successful for Im image editing and, and, and the like. And in this case, it's really to, uh, to help the training of the most important parts. So you train this, this, this guy here in order to be able to turn your uh, uh, your source images into something uh, which looks like a target domain. It means that in a sense you take your, the distribution for you, each for which you have the data and you, you, you get it back to almost the same as the one you are interested in and by doing that you, you benefit from the, the, the annotation that you have with the source data. Um, and at the same time, they, uh, so they, they have another part of the system. So this is the, the main part, uh, learning for the, uh, learning the, uh, the, the segmentation. And they have other uh, way to, um, to align the, uh, the distributions. Here, it's, uh, um, they, 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 st they still have this adversarial training where they try to align here at the, uh, uh, at the uh, global level, I think. And here, it's at the feature level. So in this case, I, I counted there were like six Provisional networks trained at once in this system, uh, pretty heavy, but uh, quite inspiring. <laughs> and another one, and you see the type of complex complexity that the people get to for this, this system. And in this one again, you have uh, um, you, you have this idea that you try to align with adversarial uh, with adversarial training the features, but also they do that not only at the uh, uh, they, they do that also at the class at the class level. So they have uh, different uh, flavors here of adversarial uh, training, and the uh, and the uh, this is the main predictor uh, above, which is uh, which is trained. Uh, for for uh, sake of time, I'm going to to, to go fast, and uh, people can uh, can have a look at the at the paper or the uh, the, the slides. Uh, and the last one, which is very important uh, for for the for the rest of the presentation, because we really uh, we built on on top of, of, of this one in a sense, uh, 
its uh, its uh, Tsai and colleagues um, uh, in in eighteen. So what they do again, you see again this idea of uh, of uh, using adversarial training to align. Uh, the two domains, but in this case it's done very late in the network. Actually the, align the alignment is done at the end. Uh, it's not completely true, you can do that at different depths, but essentially one of the, uh, one of the, uh, um, of the, um, uh, the, the key ingredient is that it's really at the end of the, uh, of the uh, um, uh, segmentation uh, network that uh, basically just you look at the, uh, the, the classification scores, uh, uh, which are uh, just before the actual uh, classification. So you, after the softmax at each pixel, you have uh, a s you have uh, C scores which are which are L1 normalized uh, uh, in order to and you can see that as sort of probabilities or soft uh, segmentations. And uh, the adversarial network here, which is this one, is in charge of deciding uh, defi deciding whether these uh, stacks of uh, of uh, scores they belong they they stem from uh, uh, target domain or source domain. So this is one of the ingredients. There are other things in the paper, but the, uh, I'll stick to that for, for, for now. Um, and the, the, this, this, this work uh, uh, was achieving the state-of-the-art uh, um, uh, performance, in particular on this scenario where you go from uh, synthetic images to real images. Um, so if we look um, more carefully at, at these, um, at these uh, soft segmentation uh, maps, which are again uh, for, each for each class, you have the, uh, uh, you, you have the, uh, this is the classification, uh, and this is what you get. You saw that before if you don't do a domain adaptation, but if you, so, so if you go one step before, which are these uh, soft maps, uh, and there are as many as you have classes, uh, what we observe, which is interesting, is that uh, uh, you can compute out of these maps, you can compute the sort of the uncertainty or the, in terms of entropy at each pixel of the decision. Of course, it's not, uh, it's not such a good uh, measure of the confidence of the decision, but it gives, uh, from, at least from the, from the segmental point of view, it tells you a bit about the, 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 the confusion. Uh, seeing that, the network can be very confident by and being wrong at the same time. So, but it can, it, 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 it's interesting to look at the confusion from the, the, the network point of view. And this is what you get uh, if the data comes from the uh, training, uh, from the, the source domain, without adaptation here. And if you look at the same thing, so here, as we said, we, we saw that it's, it's a bit messy, etc. But in a sense, there is even more information in, the, in this entropy map, uh, where you see there are a lot of, uh, of high value for the entropy, meaning of many scores which are, uh, which are very similar. Uh, and, and also, especially, it's very, it's very noisy and very messy. And uh, so what, what we, we figured in the, in the work that uh, now I'm going to, to, uh, to briefly present is to leverage this idea uh, in terms of, uh, of uh, um, uh, doing domain ad adaptation through entropy criteria. Um, so this is the uh, th so this th this is this is a work that that, that is going to, um, to to be presented uh, in June at CVPR. Uh, uh, where, where we, we try to do that, and uh, as I said, the, the 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 entropy is an interesting indicator of, of of being well or not well aligned in terms of of noise and and, and values. And also, uh, what what is interesting about this uh, this indicator is that you don't need the actual label to compute it. You just look at the scores and you com you compute. So you don't you don't need the uh, the actual classification. Uh, so it's very convenient. So we have proposed two ways to leverage these uh, these ob observations. One I one is an explicit direct minimization of the entropy at the pixel level for the target uh, domain data. So it's it's a simple loss uh, on that qu quantity. And another one which does leverage the idea of adversarial training is, uh, is uh, in a sense, um, is, um, is, is look at the all, uh, uh, at the all uh, entropy maps, so there is more structure to the, to, the, to, um, to the system, which really try to decide based on these maps whether it's still target domain or source domain. Uh, and the, the hope is that we, uh, after adaptation, we have uh, the entropy maps, which looks like more, uh, which are similar for both domains, and, uh, and eventually that we get, uh, that we get better performance. Uh, so this is what we will get in the end. Uh, so better classification and cleaner uh, uh, entropy maps, or in a sense, entropy map, which really look like the one you would get if you were in the uh, source domain. <coughs> Um, 
So how we do that? I will just uh, bring up the, uh, the, the, the architecture and I will try to, uh, to give um, um, the, um, the intuition with a bit of uh, notations here uh, on the uh, different, th these two ways we approach the problem. So this is your main uh, uh, segmenter. Uh, it can be of different types. It's uh, essentially a convolutional encoder decoder which produces uh, these uh, soft segmentation maps. So there are as many as classes and each one uh, is a sort of a, a probability if you wish. Uh, so in this diagram, uh, all the red arrows are for things coming from the target domain and the blue from the source domain. So source domain, you have the, uh, the, the ground truth, okay? Um, and um, so this, in order to, as I said, we are going to, we are going to look at this entropy here. And uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's quite obvious that the, uh, uh, this entropy can be, uh, I mean, if you look at the equation, it's essentially the sum pixel wise of this uh, P uh, log P thing. Minus. Uh, so we, we, we for, for sake of, 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 um, of, um, of clarity and also it's, it's quite interesting to, to, to introduce explicitly these this, uh, this maps, intermediate map, where basically you take the, your soft maps and you turn them into what is called weighted information. And if you want to actually compute the, the, uh, the, the, um, the entropy, you just uh, aggregate uh, pixel wise, okay? Uh, and this is what you, what you get. So this is the, 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 the architecture, and now I'm going to go through the dif different losses which allows us to, uh, to train the system uh, uh, in the, different, the two different versions. So the first version, as I said, is an explicit uh, 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 minimization of, uh, of the uh, entropy uh, at the pixel level for the uh, source, uh, for the target domain data. So basically, of course, you have the main loss. This is for the, your main task. This is the classic uh, cross entropy uh, loss on the, uh, for the data for which you have the, the ground truth. So this is on the source uh, data, and this is the ground truth turned into a one hot indicator. So this is super classic. And uh, what we add now is this, um, uh, this uh, second term, which is called uh, loss entropy, which is, as I said, specific to the uh, target domain data. Uh, which is essentially penalizing the, the entropy, okay? So what we just have for this version of the system, we, our loss is uh, this uh, compound loss where there is the main task on the target on source data and the entropy loss on the uh, target uh, data. And the second version, and they can be combined, is uh, a bit more cumbersome uh, because there is an adversarial, uh, an ad there is an adversary uh, to be trained uh, which aims is to decide whether your uh, uh, weighted uh, information maps come from a source or target uh, domain. Um, so this is basically what we, you, there are two, two as classically with adversarial training, you alternate, alternate between the main network, in this case the parameters are uh, theta f and the discriminator network, which is not represented in my in my uh, in my uh, diagram, um, whose, whose parameters are denoted uh, theta d, as you might expect. And if you just we just look for now the uh, at the loss for the discriminator, it basically it's a classification loss. It has to decide whether this uh, stack of weighted information maps come from. Uh, source, in that case the label is one, or come from target, and or in that case the label is, uh, is uh, zero, okay? And uh, when it comes uh, to the uh, segmenter to be trained, then the second line here, well, you have the, of course, the uh, main task part, which is only on the source data for which you have the annotation. And there is the other part here, which is sort of the, of the this is the counterpart of this one. This is where uh, the, the, the part which uh, encourages the, um, the, the, the segmenter to, to, uh, um, to fool the discriminator. So that's why you have the opposite label. And the two things are done in alter, uh, in altern uh, alternatively. Okay, so some experiments. Um, and a few ingredients, at least for the, uh, the, 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 the practitioners. So the, uh, the, segment, the segmentation network, is, uh, it's, uh, it's something off the shelf, which is called Deep Lab V2, and it comes in different flavors, depending on what is the base uh, convolution network underneath. Uh, so it's e e either uh, VGG, um, VGG16 or uh, ResNet uh, 101. 
Um, so this is for the main uh, segmentation network. And then in the case we do the adversarial training, we need as well a discriminator. Uh, uh, this one as well is classic. It comes from the DCGAN paper and it's essentially four convolutional layers. And then you have the fully connected part for the, uh, for the binary classif classification uh, task that you, you're after. Uh, and uh, for the few numbers, just a few numbers that I'm going to report, the classic uh, metric is the uh, mean, array, uh, mean intersection over union uh, metric. So it's a percentage, the higher the better. Uh, so in this work, we have mostly, uh, at least for the seg semantic segmentation uh, problem, we have focused on this setup where uh, source is synthetic data. And there are basically two uh, data sets which are used for these, uh, for these benchmarks. One is GTA, GTA 5, and as the name indicates, it, it comes from the game. And the other one is Cynthia. Um, they, are, they, they have different characteristics, even including the number of images and the number of classes. Uh, and in both cases, we have the same uh, target domain data, which is cityscapes. Of course, we do have annotation in cityscapes for, uh, for semantic segmentation, but we are not using them at all. The, we assume that this is the target domain devoid of any uh, annotation. Uh, so in, in the first case, we have 25,000 training images. In the second, we have uh, 10,000. And in both cases, we have 3,000 uh, images uh, for, the, um, for cityscapes. Uh, and this is not exactly the same number of classes, but because these de but these the, all these data sets are very completely uh, independent data sets and they don't come, and it, by the way, uh, it, it comes back as well to this issue with the annotation. You take different data sets, they don't come with the same number of labels, the same taxonomy for the labels, etc. So in this case, we have to deal with what is in common between the, uh, uh, the two data sets. So there are 19 uh, classes in the first case in common and 16 in the second case. Uh, well, a bit of uh, qualitative results to start with. So what you see on this, um, uh, then I will zoom in a bit. So this is uh, the um, one example uh, on, um, on uh, I think it's a train on, on GTA, GTA 5. So this is one test scene from, Cynthia, <laughs> from uh, Cityscapes where you see here the ground truth. You see then what, what could be the uh, segmentation if you don't do at all domain adaptation and you see above the, uh, the associated um, uh, entropy map. Then you see with the first uh, way to enforce uh, this entropy-based uh, uh, adaptation, which is pixel-wise with an explicit loss. And the last one is using the more, uh, uh, more um, um, complex, uh, but a bit more powerful version with an, uh, with a, um, uh, um, an adversarial uh, network, and you see the result on the right. And you see that in that in the la in the last case, we really get an, uh, just talking about the um, um, the entropy here. We get maps re which really look like the one you you would get for uh, source uh, domain uh, data. Uh, and, um, and you again, you have the, uh, the legend also, which helps you appreciate the type of confusions that sometimes you get. Uh, typically, you, on the street, you might have, you st I mean, in this case, without ad adaptation, it's interesting to see that the, the street is completely contaminated by cars. This is a very classic problem. And we have much less of that, although it's not perfect by far, as we will see in the numbers uh, on the... Um, so you put images from it. Hmm? Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's the problem when you finish your slides on the on the morning. The results are, the result are pretty good, isn't it? The, even with the wrong image. Uh, hopefully, it's better on this example. Yes, sort of. Yes, I think it's good. Uh, now on this, I'm just focusing. <laughs> Thank you, Mathieu. Uh, I'm focusing. So two more example, two examples this time, and with the, the, the one which was on the previous slide, and uh, just showing with and without adaptation. And the second is the, with the adversarial adaptation based on entropy. And uh, again, to see, to see at least uh, qualitatively how much we recover from the sort of uh, the, the dramatic errors that were ob uh, uh, obtained without adaptation. Uh, so. Uh, if you were just actually, if you were just given this, uh, I mean, you uh, as uh, as a human, you 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 see now more that the, the shape of the pedestrians and the lampposts, etc. So it, it's quite clear that the semantic of the scene is obviously way be way better conveyed uh, this way. Uh, and I have a little uh, video here. Hopefully, it works. It does. Um, where you see. Uh, 
you see on the uh, bottom left without, on the right, uh, uh, bottom right with adaptation, and you see the little uh, picture in picture for the, uh, for the entropies. As I said, it's, uh, there we, we are not completely <laughs> uh, devoid of issue, but it does fix a, lo uh, a number of problems, and I don't know why it's uh, uh, jittering like that. Um, But it, it tells also uh, how far we are in general, especially if you imagine these type of things in the critical system. Um, so that's good, there is margin for improvement. Okay, talk, talking of, of, of margin for improvement, a few numbers. Um, uh, so I report, uh, these are just a selection of numbers in the paper. Obviously there are way more, including comparison to more uh, approaches in the literature. Um, so there are the two tables correspond to the two setups, one which is uh, for using GTA 5 as a source domain and the other one uh, using Cynthia. And, uh, and uh, we have comparison with uh, essentially three very recent and, and very close uh, uh, contenders. Um, and there are two parts in each table, sorry for the complexity, because depends what is the backbone architecture on the, you might, for the, the one used to that, you might recognize here the, the, the VGG, the, mo the monster VGG with these, uh, how much is it, how many is it? 100 or so million parameters. Uh, and the, uh, and below is another type of monster, which is ResNet with uh, many, many layers, but way more parameters and, and uh, better actually capacity. Uh, so we, we, in order to compare things being equal, uh, it's better to we split the table this way. Um, so if I try to uh, just to, to, to analyze the numbers, uh, I, I just I have to, to say something more. So what you see, uh, the first column is the actual uh, uh, mean IOU. Um, okay, so margin for improvement. Uh, second column is the oracle. So what is the oracle? Is uh, what you would obtain if you were able to train on uh, annotated, uh, under full supervision, directly on the target domain, okay? Uh, so using that case, the ground truth from, uh, from, uh, as annotation from, uh, uh, from cityscapes, okay? And, it's, and it's, it's really important because essentially with the given technology we have, it, tells, it gives us the, what is the upper bound uh, that we can reach, and it, then we can report just the, the gap between the, uh, the, gap between the two. Uh, and, um, so the, what we call single model here is when we use only the adversarial entropy uh, adaptation and for our method. And when it says two models, it's, it means that we use the two ways to enforce or to, to, to play with the entropy, the direct minimization and the adversarial one. Uh, and it, it does bring a bit of, of, uh, of, of improvement. Um, so in, in here, what we see that we, we are f uh, a few points above the, uh, the direct competition on both uh, data sets. They are, I mean, they are, um, they have different difficulties, the two data sets. I should have said that Cynthia, the, uh, it doesn't show in the numbers, but the, uh, the, the type of, of, of viewpoints that you get in this, uh, in this synthetic data set is fairly different from what you have in, in Cityscape. Or at least it's much more, it's more diverse. Um, and, uh, uh, let's see, so here we see again that the, the, this is what the, the, the best we, we can get is with the, the, the mix of two. Uh, what is interesting is that, it's not on the slide by the way, but if we were to use our method just with the direct entropy minimization loss, not the adversarial, we are almost on the par with this one, the recent one by Tsai, although in that case we don't train an, uh, an adversary. So it's much uh, cheaper to, to train. You have only one main network to train. So it can be an option. It's, it, 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 it's, it's not as good as the full-fledged uh, version that we, we propose, but it's, you can see that as a trimmed down version, which is uh, way cheaper and, and has already on the par result with the state of the art. Um, enough numbers. Uh, I've mentioned so far only um, uh, semantic segmentation, but uh, 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 clearly uh, there are many other aspects of scene analysis th that should benefit from the, uh, the from the main annotation. So with this, uh, with the almost exact same approach, we we very, uh, well, we preliminarily uh, approach another problem, which is object detection. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, by the way, there, there is an actual object detection domain adaptation literature, which I didn't review here. Uh, but 
from the, the here it's it's not a full-fledged study because there is uh, the setup we tried here for, there is no uh, there is no comparison there is no literature uh, there is, there is no numbers in, in the literature but just to give you a hint of, of uh, how this can be used so the scenario here is that you can tr you train on uh, clear time data and you want to, to have your system still good uh, in presence of fog. So it turns out that there is, uh, uh, from ETH, uh, at least Van Gogh's group, there is a data set, they, they, they turn uh, cityscapes into uh, a foggy version of cityscapes. Uh, so the, the, the image, the scene is real, the fog actually is, this is, this is not the, the best version, but the fog is synthetic and it's quite visible here. But it's not a completely silly fog, it's based on the depth, because on, with cityscapes you can have depth maps that are computed from uh, stereo. So they use this uh, depth uh, to uh, synthesize fog, which density depends on how distant you are from the camera. And, uh, and of course, because on, you have the ground truth uh, object bounding boxes on the cityscapes, then you, you have them as well, at least for, for um, computing your metric on the, on the foggy um, uh, data set. So we, we adapted, no details here, but we adapted our uh, entropy-based approach to the detection problem. So we took an uh, off-the-shelf uh, uh, detector network, which is SSD in this case, and we applied the, uh, we sort of augmented it with uh, the entropy loss, the adversarial entropy loss, etc. And this is uh, some of the numbers we got per class uh, and also the uh, mean average precision um, over the classes and with the two types of, uh, um, the two types of uh, uh, adaptation. And you see that uh, the gain is massive compared to not adapting, okay? Uh, but uh, what I find more interesting is, is just this uh, little uh, visualization where you see that not surprisingly a system which has been trained only on uh, clear uh, time data uh, misses a lot of detection when it, it, it is co confronted to uh, foggy uh, scenes and we recover a lot of these uh, misdetections uh, mis uh, after adaptation. All right. So uh, before I move uh, to, uh, because I will have time for a bit of, uh, of uh, supplementary, uh, some outlooks here based on what I, I presented. Uh, First of all, I want to re-emphasize that it's, uh, uh, from a practical point of view, domain adaptation is, uh, uh, or being in situations where you have domain gaps between, tr at, uh, between the training time and the uh, actual deployment of your system is super important. And it's all the more important when you deal with critical systems like the one we, we, we target here, which are uh, self-driving cars, but you can name many others. Uh, uh, we saw before uh, medical imaging uh, data clearly uh, um, this uh, might be is, might be very relevant for uh, for in medicines and in many other th many other domains, uh, and at least in our ex uh, current experience, there is quite a, a big uh, margin for improvement. So I think it's uh, it's uh, it's a very um, uh, it's a very important research topic. Uh, among the different ways we can uh, um, um, we can go about to to improve and to reduce further this uh, this uh, margin. Um, uh, I very briefly uh, uh, skimmed through existing uh, recent methods. Each method has a number of ingredients, uh, and some of them can be actually reused uh, or combined with what we have. So I, I really advocate for uh, different types of, of hybridization between uh, what we present in this case and other ingredients. Uh, for instance, one that I mentioned for one of, the, uh, of the, the, the work from the literature, they have this class prior, which is very powerful. I mean, if, if, if the, the proportion of each <laughs> class that you observe in the, the, in the ground truth of your source domain, I mean, obviously, if the scene are really similar, and this is uh, why it works, the scene that you, the structure of the, the scene that you want to analyze at runtime is similar, this uh, proportion of, of, of in, for semantic segmentation at least, this proportion of classes should be fairly uh, uh, aligned. And this is a very easy way to help uh, the, um, uh, the adaptation. Uh, there is another one which is called conservative lo loss, but this is the idea that uh, uh, adaptation, um, it's, you, it's, you might want to focus on not on all the, um, the, 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 the pixels in this case in the scene, but uh, to do the adaptation, but more on, on pixels for which uh, you are either very confident or not. Actually, there are not uh, uh, there are contradictory uh, ways to take this problem, but you might want to restrict 
the part of the scene where you do the adaptation based on such a certain criteria. And actually, in, in our work, we did that in some of the versions. It was helpful in some cases. I, I decided not to report that in the results. Uh, it was, uh, we, we were focusing only on, on uh, the, the loss, uh, the entropy loss was only uh, uh, concerning pixel for which the entropy was in a certain range. Uh, but of course, it, it, it brings new hyperparameters, etc. It's not very comfortable. But it's interesting to see that you can gain more uh, performance by doing that. Um, another uh, another thing which uh, uh, I will show just with some pictures af after this slide uh, that we are currently working on is the exploitation of privileged information. So. Privileged information is one uh, at training time you have more information basically basically in terms of, of ground truth that that you need for your uh, target task uh, and typically we, uh, it's very tr very true with synthetic uh, scenes uh, even if you are only after um, uh, semantic segmentation it turns out that in your data you have the depth map so if one can leverage depth map at training time on the source domain data. Uh, then uh, it's called privileged information learning. Um, uh, we'll see in a sec that indeed it, it can be useful. Uh, another thing that, uh, another type of hybridization that I, I, I like to, to, to suggest, and I already mentioned that at the very beginning, uh, in, in practice, assuming that you have zero uh, annotation on the, on the target data is a bit silly. You might afford a, a, a bit of, 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 of annotation. In that case, it becomes a mix of semi-supervised learning or few shot learning and data, uh, data augmentation. Uh, sorry, data uh, domain adaptation. Sorry for the lapses. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, at least in the way the, um, the, the methods are compared on the academic benchmarks, it's uh, essentially a performance on the target data, uh, on the target domain. But again, in real life, uh, it's not because you have uh, adapted your system to see as well in fog that uh, you accept to lose performance on uh, clear time, uh, uh, clear time um, uh, scenes, obviously. Uh, in that case, uh, and this to me advocates for something which is not so much uh, domain adaptation, but more domain, domain extension, where you s or, or say differently, you don't forget what you have learned to do well in the, uh, in the source domain. Of course, if the source domain is synthetic data, you don't care. But if the source domain is, is another modality, and if you, if you train in Paris and you want to, also that the, your system works in Japan, again, you want to retain what you've learned when you come back to Paris, basically, and you don't want to switch from one system to another. So, uh, let me, up. Uh, can I show you just pictures here? Yeah. Um, so this is, uh, just to leave a bit of time for questions, maybe. Hmm? Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so, so, so this is a, re a recent extension of the work, where, as I, where, as I said, we use uh, we leverage additional information at training time on the on the source domain data, uh, which is in this case uh, um, um, uh, depth maps, le dense depth map. So, uh, the idea is that uh, there is an auxiliary task beside the uh, the semantic segmentation, which is the actual prediction of this map. So that you so, and this uh, and by 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 having this auxiliary task, um, it, uh, it it in a sense it 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 uh, encouraged the uh, encoder part of your network to have even more transferable uh, features, uh, and this is uh, something that we we experimented and you see here the comparison. So the 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 the, 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 the nice uh, or the cute name we choose is Dada for de <coughs> depth aware data augmentation. Uh, sorry for the lapsus, domain adaptation. <laughs> and, um, and here you see the sa exactly the same type of thing that you saw uh, for, uh, until now in the presentation with, uh, uh, with the entropy-based um, uh, adaptation. Here you see that if you leverage this uh, knowledge at training time, which is depth, then the final system is, is, is improving even further. And you see some of the improvement here on the, on the road uh, uh, with uh, less uh, Actually, this is car label, less car label, for instance, and this uh, transfers in the uh, in the numbers. Uh, and I th think I have a video. And again, and this is again is uh, is jittering. I guess it's because of the HDMI port somewhere. Sorry about that. I can show that on the com computers for people interested. But uh, we 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 have similar uh, uh, results, but with uh, improved performance uh, using this uh, extended version. Um, I'm going to stop on this uh, video, and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.
So we have time for one or two quick questions, because otherwise the lunch break. Yeah. Sorry. Well, thank you for the nice presentation. Uh, I've been working a couple of years ago on similar settings uh, as the adversarial version of your work. Uh -huh. Apart from the entropy uh, maps, which is a great idea, by the way. But we, we faced uh, a couple of difficulties, especially with respect to the, the, um, the weightings between, between the, the segmentation task and the uh, adversarial loss. Mm -hmm. And it's special, it is surely hard to, to tackle because you don't have supervision to like cross validate and stop this, the, the, the learning based on a holdout set. So have yeah, you, have you noticed have the same uh, thing or is it we, different we, we, for you? We did uh, play with the, um, so with the obviously each of the loss terms has his own uh, uh, magical weight parameter. We, we did play, I mean, uh, we did experiment with different values and we were monitoring how much it was, uh, for instance, moni monitoring the individual loss in particular, was the system able to, uh, to decrease the, uh, uh, the entropies. What we realized is that if it was too aggressive, then it would just uh, 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 stick on, the data adaptation was really uh, sticking on s uh, only some of the classes, so it wasn't satisfactory, so we, di we did have to, uh, to, 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 to do cross validation or this kind of things just to find the right balance. But uh, and as far as I know, it was the, the weight was pretty small. Um, but no, no, we, we, I, I guess we just faced the same, uh, the same thing. Of course, in the, uh, in the simpler version where we don't have uh, an adversarial network to be trained at the same time, we, we, we cut quite uh, importantly the, this type of complexity, but we have slightly less uh, uh, good results, although state of the art still. Okay, so uh, let's thank uh, Patrick again.